Whilst many of you will have been focusing on the World Champs ITT today, we saw many of the leaders for the road race next week in action at Eschborn Frankfurt. Trek Segafredo, though, Mads Pedersen, who was on the provisional start list, not riding for them, but we had Degenkolb. This is a really big race for him. Pascal Ackermann, perhaps his last race in Germany for Bora Hansgrohe, as well as Jasper Philipsen, although he won't be at World Champs, which I'll talk about in a second. Emmanuel Buchmann, as well as Andre Greipel, Michael Mann. Matthews, Fred Wright, Bauhaus as well, Dylan Hoenewerken. But the question was, would they survive this course, which isn't pancake flat? It actually has a fair bit of climbing. The Mammal Shane climb they do, I think four times, has, is about 2Ks at 8%. But the last climb is quite far from the finish. So you would need to put in a fair bit of work with your domestics to make sure that the riders like Hoenewerken were dropped at that point and stayed dropped. But yeah, this is one of Germany's biggest races, Eschborn Frankfurt. I think there's also the Classics Hamburg race. But yeah, it's World Tour level. Remember, Deutschland Diner Tour isn't World Tour level. And in the breakaway, we had Luke Durbridge for Australia. Here, instead of doing the individual time trial at the World Championships, because Rowan Dennis didn't do it and Australia didn't send a team to the men's TT. But Durbridge was in the break here, along with Rezel Simone Velasco for Gazprom, Matthias Norsgaard for Movistar and Valet for Bingo, with Velasco keen to take the KOM points on the day. And actually, the riders like Gronewegen, Bauhaus, Greipel, Cockard, Venturini, they all DNF'd, there are a lot of DNFs, in this race because it was actually quite a challenging circuit at the start and I guess if you got dropped why keep chasing back on it is getting to that time of the year in mid-September and if you're not at World Champs right now and you don't have too much left after your program then maybe riders aren't in the best form or as good a form as they were at the start of the year but Bike Exchange were keen to make it hard on these climbs obviously Michael Matthews was climbing very well in the Vuelta Espana the problem was actually finishing that off in the sprints but we saw on stage six the Cullera finish that's almost the best I've ever seen him climb that 2k 8% finish there and we have Dylan Turns as well who's been selected in the Belgian team for the World Championships road race next weekend. He did have a good classics campaign in some races at, say, Tour of Flanders. I remember he's in a break with Marco Halla for Bahrain Victorious. But yeah, no Edward turns in that Belgian team. It was somewhat surprising to me. Just Sturvan left for the final lead out. But the breakaway was kept under control and as expected, as, as it usually does, this would come down to still a reduced bunch sprint with the faster men like Gronerweg and Bauhaus and co getting dropped. But we still have Degenkolb Ackerman, Jasper Philipson, even Garcia Cortina, Michael Matthews, Andrea Pascalon, and it was Bike Exchange controlling once again Rob Stannard on the front. And then they had Luca Mezges, the loyal lead out last man for Michael Matthews. You see to the left of Matthews here under the Flamme Rouge. We have UAE on the front with Bistrom and Oliveira for Alexander Kristoff. Watch out for him next weekend. As well as Krieger for Alperson in front of Philipson, and Krieger does. An unbelievably good job in the lead out here because you see how far forward he is. He's not getting perfect protection from the wind and he's even able to bring Philipson forward in the last 500 meters in front of the UAE train. Christoph slides back whereas Michael Matthews almost deliberately it seemed loses Mezget's wheel here and Mezget's is looking back at him and it's a bit of a mess what happens with Mezget's and Matthews here. Mezget's I think thought he was bringing Matthews to second wheel and Mezget's would be first wheel. Now Matthews is eating half wind. He's fighting with Degenkolb a little bit for Pasqualon and Philipson's wheel not getting a perfect sit. It's Fred Wright sprinting for Bahrain victorious because Bauhaus has been dropped and so you see here Mezget's checking once again where's Matthews and Matthews eating a lot of wind there with Garcia Cortina on his wheel. So a bit of a shame for Bike Exchange once again, kind of a similar narrative to what happened in the welter, working a lot for not much result. And here's Krieger's massive effort bringing Philipson forward, but as he slows down a little bit, you see Ackerman to the left-hand side. It's John Dagenpold on the right, moving to DSM next year after being at Lotto for a couple of years, starting his sprint very early. It's a bit of a bendy finish. He was trying to get the jump on Philipson, but Philipson sees him coming, and Philipson won. He's won like six races before today this season. He won at Shelter Price ahead of Bennett and Cavendish. He gets and waits perfectly for the lead up, basically, from Degenkolb. Comes around into the left-hand side. Christoph got boxed in when Philipson moved 
onto the barriers, onto Dagen Cobb's wheel, and Philipson wins by about two bike lengths. You can see in the overhead here where Christoph, Christoph has to swing to the left-hand side. Ackerman once again, UAE. I look forward to seeing him with Gaviria, Hodge, and Milano in the sprints next year. He was out of position once again, but Philipson, a clean pair of heels. He would walk into any other team for the World Championships if he wasn't Belgian. Shoulder Price beat Jakobsen twice at the Velta, won Championship van Vlaanderen, whatever that race is, last week. He is good in these 30 to 40 man semi-reduced bunch sprints, and he takes out Eschborn Frankfurt in convincing fashion, his seventh win of the season. Out of John Degenkolb, who was very disappointed and upset after coming second, but I actually thought showed pretty good legs, and Christoph Pasqualon, Ackerman, Garcia Cortina. Laporte, Turnison, Matthews, and Fred Wright. Laporte obviously going with to be with Turnison to help Wout van Aert, I think, in the Classics next year for Jumbo Visma. But Christoph still showing reasonable form as well. So you always got to watch out for Christoph in the big races. He'll have Bistrom, Rasmus Tiller, Vergard Stecker, Langen next week for Norway. If it's rainy, he obviously gets a plus 50 watt buff. But I hope you enjoyed this Eschborn Frankfurt recap. Like it down below if you didn't. We'll have some more preview stuff for the World Championships during the course of next week. Ciao.